Okay, this task is all about doing an orthographic um, sketches of a product. And in this case, it's an earbuds holder. There is a packaging top and a plastic insert. So take your drawings and any booklet that you get given and they're yours to add notes and text to. That is important so you can remember everything. Now, what we see here is the top, it's got a curve, which is radius four, and then that size there is seven, and then that size there is six, so 17 millimeters in height. The base is 10 millimeters in height, the inserts eight millimeters in height, so that fits inside there. You notice that 66, it tells you the top and the base have a two millimeter wall thickness. So if that's two, that's two, adds to four from the 70 gives you your 66. So that's how that bit fits in very neatly. <clears throat> You'll notice that bit there is 20 and lo and behold, so is that. That's six down and so will that be there as well. So this bit fits in perfectly. You can't see that bit on the other side, but you know there is a bit on the other side because there's two slots for it to fit into. Your size for there to there comes from that drawing, that size there, so you know that that's 25. So it's a sketch, it shouldn't be overly complicated. And the task that I'm going to do, I'm going to use a um, red pen for all my construction lines because it stands out. I have a straight edge that I like to use. Um, it makes things a lot quicker. Notice no dimensions. It's a sketch. You've just got to get the proportions right. And you've got to imagine if you were sat with a client and you were talking through their design and what they want, etc. So you're able to quickly draw something up and then take that drawing back to your computer and create the parts using the CAD software for it to be able to be manufactured. Any dimensions that are missing on the sketch, then you know that's one you have to add. When you find out what dimensions are missing when you come to try and do the CAD drawing because you won't know what size is. Given the shape of all these, this part and that part are the same length and width then drawing those beside each other would make sense and doing that part to off to the side. I'm going to try to get all three parts on one sheet of A3 paper. So starting off with, I'm thinking there's a top, which would make sense to do at the top, and a bottom, which I'll do down there. I'll probably do that second part on the other side. We need to leave a space for a title block. So if I start with the top, very straightforward, it's a rectangle and the length 70 by 55. So you've got a fair idea of the proportions and I'm just going to lightly draw it in so we know that the height of it is long, is not as deep. If I make the width about there. And 55 would come to about there then. <clears throat> Purely guesswork. For this drawing, that's all you can see. You have your hidden detail now. Remember, just because there is a curve doesn't mean to say you'll see these lines. However, inside there is this line here that goes all the way around. And if you're looking down on top, you cannot see that. There is also this part sticking out, which is like a finger grip to help you pull it up. So that's 20 out of the 55. Then that leaves 35, which leaves, so 35 and half, 17.5 either side. So it's almost split into a third, a third. So if I take that bit, and split it into a third just by guessing, then there's the points that I start to have. Now, 
I'm going to use my black pen to darken it in. So I've got there to there. Got the top. And that bit. And we sticky out. Well, that's 20, and then you're coming in a wee bit more for the sticky out bit. Uh, the dimensions of it are six long and radius one either side, so you're adding two, so it's eight long. Eight from 20 leaves 12, so you've got six either side, so six, eight, and six. So again, it's not quite a third, but I'd say about there. So that part sticking out, and remember you don't have to reduce your ruler for every single part. However, I need to get the hidden detail for the, the inside being all the way around, two millimetres. Now that, in reality, might be more than two millimetres, but it's a sketch, it really doesn't matter if you don't have it exactly two millimetres. However, I would want to make it look parallel. Join that wee bit up there, make that look a bit better. And we're going to have a little bit of hidden detail there and there to represent those two edges coming down. We've already got that now. And that will tick off everything that's needed for that part. To get the elevation then, all we want to do is project that down, project that down. Everything that's on edge comes down. If you're doing it in pencil, then the biggest mistake people make is always, always drawing lines that are too dark. Now, before I start to do the curves, I'm just going to get the shape in. Looking at the proportions of this, we said that it was 17 high compared to 70 long, so 7 plus 4 is 11, so if I'm making it about that height, and then the sticky down part, I call it sticky down, which sounds a bit stupid, but it is what it is. So let's make a... Um, 11, I'd say about there. And then sticking down another 6 is going to be about there. Four radius and seven up. Now this is quite confusing actually. I think this drawing looks a little bit confusing because you would think that size looks smaller than that size if we kind of drew all that out. It almost looks as though that should be a lot higher. But remember, it's only radius 4. So that's more than halfway. And that would catch a lot of people out. And they'd perhaps lose a mark for doing that. But there is where that edge starts. Comes to here. And there. Down and down. A radius 4. Freehand draw it. Don't lose sleep over it being perfectly four millimetres. Darken that in. You'll notice there's a curve here. Radius four again. So you just want to come down a wee bit and should look about the same as that, which I'm happy with. It does. This part here, um, it looks as though if I take a line from there across to there. Looks like that cuts right through the middle, doesn't it? And it's up and below that. So what I'm going to do is up and below that middle line. Draw that in. There we go. And to finish off, we want the hidden detail again for all of that coming all the way around. Two millimetres, it said wall thickness. Job done. End the elevation. 
we want all these lines to come across. Now what we want to do is get the the base. You can see the base and what it's going to look like. So I'm going to move that over to here now so that we can get this in. Now the base is the same width. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the same width and do it directly in line. If you've got two parts fitting together, it makes sense to do it like that. So there we go. The base we want to do the plan view first, so I'm going to start the plan, leaving enough room for titles, etc. Do it there. It's exactly the same width, so that looks to be about there. We're doing third angle projection, remember, so your elevation is always in line with your plan, which is always looking down on top. And in this case, I've chosen to do the end elevation on the right. It's a completely symmetrical product, so it doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right. And our bit here, which I'm going to do in red, because I'm unsure about this just now, so I'll leave a gap. Looking at the height of it, it's only 10 millimetres, um, which is quite small. And when you consider that bit there is 10 millimetres plus 4, so the top is taller than the base. So if that's my top, then I'm going to make my base that size. Now, what have we got for this part? We have all the way around the inside and we have the line all the way around. So I'm going to draw that straight away. leaving it where I think it starts and finishes it should be in line with that there's the hidden detail where it is on that view so there's where it's going to come to we have the cutout part which is going to be there and there and there and there that wasn't challenging was it we also have the base and the cutout. So let's bring the, the cutout down to here. Not drawing that, that. There we go. The cutout is the same size as that, which is six down. If this is ten high, then it comes past, so it's going to be about there. Now, I think I could do with making this a wee bit deeper. And that's the advantage of using the red pen. My dark one is the finished product. I'll do that neatly using the straight edge. There to there. Like so. Hidden detail. End elevation. That's the end elevation. What I can they all need a title now, so we have in capitals plan 
elevation and the elevation. You always try to make your words so that the, uh, the top of them and the bottom of them are all in line. Now it's time to get the insert done, which we'll do over here. Now the insert comes into this part. You know, you know it's going to sit into the base, don't you? So if you've already got a lot of this drawn, then use it. So it fits inside, so I'm going to make it fit around about here. Uh, I need to make my lines a wee bit, my red line, my construction red lines a wee bit darker. So it stands out, just that wee bit. You can see the advantage of using the red pen. And it's going to go into there. The insert is 8 high, which is that inside size of the part. So if I start to bring it over, so it's going to be between there and there. So I know the height, I know the width, I need to just get the length now. The length is going to fit in between there and there, so let me just get that. Even if I make it that full width, it's a sketch, you're going to add the sizes, the proper sizes, in a minute. So um, between there and there, here we go. So. Right, now we're good to go with this insert part. And there it is, this here. The plan view really is going to be the trickiest, isn't it? So if we look at this, we've got this cut out with a little chamfer there and there. And the dimension, 18 and then 18, that looks to me like it's right in the middle between there and there. What dimension is that? Um, 51, because it's 55 that's fitting into minus a 2mm wall thickness on each end. So that's where you get your 51 from. So if I first of all take a line cutting across the middle, I think it would be the best bet. So I'm going to take the middle, do that. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm looking at this. This circle comes right out close to the edge. So I'm going to want to know that that's there and there. There's a solid bit in the middle. So if I get the middle, which is there to there, and I just do a bit either side, There's my solid bit in the middle. So now I have effectively got that line, that line, that drawn, and that drawn. I can see that distance there is a bit bigger than that distance. So if I get the top of the bottom, top of it drawn in between there and there, and now I've got some guidelines to be able to match it in with. And there's a curve. That semicircle, we know the apex of the circle is bang in the middle. So if I get right into the middle of there, is where the apex of that curve is. Let's draw that in. So from the apex, it curves up to there, down. Same at this end. Like so. You can see the thickness of that part on either side and how far down it comes. Again, that looks very similar in size to that at the top, so I'm going to make it about there. And then it's going to go up there. Now I can go straight on to the black pen because I know where that goes to. There's a chamfer, very small chamfer, 45 degrees, so try and make it look 45 degrees. Bring that down. And 
and I can darken my outline in now. Not losing sleep about them being perfectly straight lines, it's a sketch. Job done. Happy with that. Here's where it gets tricky for your elevation view though. There's going to be a fair bit of hidden detail. How are you going to know what's what? Well, you're going to project it all down, aren't you? So if I come across, there's a bit that goes all the way through. And there's a bit that goes all the way through. There's a bit. And then repeated exactly the same on the other side. Next stage is adding the dimensions and a title block. We'll do the title, there's a good space for the title block, so I'll leave up there for the title block. Dimension, how am I going to know what dimensions to put on and where to put them? Well, you've been given a drawing, so as you add a dimension, tick it off or score it off on the drawing. So let's start with the complicated part. So 51 heights um, width there. So if I do... A dimension line. Remember, small dimensions closer, big dimensions further away. Neat little arrows. Dimension on top of the line as though you're looking from the right hand side or below. And we want this size from there to there and there. Get that dimension line all the way down. Fill in your neat black arrows. I've done that. This is going to be 18 and 18. Now, there's a debate. It doesn't tell you that size there, does it? So, can you figure it out? If that's right in the middle, 18 and 18 is 36. Um, from 51 leaves 15, so that size there is going to be, I'll write it on top of this line, 7.5, because it's 15 either side, so they sit in the middle. 8 height, so I'll get my dimension line. Remember, you've always got to get your projection lines, and your projection lines must not touch the product. So that's eight. Score that one out. Five, six, six. Oh, done it the other way around, haven't I? Six, five. Six. There we go. Um, score those ones out. And our chamfer, 3 by 45 degrees. So between there and there, you can't fit all that in on that line. So do it so it's two arrows pointing into each other. 3 by 45 degrees. Job done. Distance from there. Remember your projection line has got to get as close as you can to the dimension that you're taking. To there is 28. That size there. To there. Sixty-six. This radius here is nine. So let's score that out and put my remember your arrow should point to the center of the axis, which highlights something that's been missed out, doesn't it? Which is the center line. So 
So see the arrow should point to the middle there. Mine's is maybe slightly out. But I'm not going to lose marks for that, am I? Centre line there. And a centre line here, right in between those two. There we go, because it's on the right hand side of that bit, those two hidden lines. Dimensions for this bit, um, for the base, there's no... I don't, well, we have shown the overall width to be 55, but personally I'm finding that I'll, on this part, we want to also show the length and the width, because it is, after all, a separate part. I know it's the same size as the base, but it would do no harm putting it on here. You don't need to show the same size twice on the same part, so for example, I wouldn't show that 70 down here, but this is a different part, so it makes sense to add the sizes in there. Next is our title block, so we want to add the title block in, and what do we need? For our title block, we need make a wee list, name, date, um, drawing, title, third angle symbol, scale. Even though there is no scale, it's worth mentioning that because somebody might come up and start measuring it thinking that there's going to be a scale. So I'm going to, you could use the very outside edge, but I'm just going to draw a little box and with a number of lines, all like so apart. 